afternoon guys, MC Procrastinator here, hope you guys are all doing well. So unfortunately, I have not had weather on my side. I've got this beautiful bike, oh, and I've got Dean Winchester here. Hey Dean, Dean. No, he's not playing ball. Dean, are you saying hello? No, he's off. Right. So I've got this beautiful bike here, and unfortunately I've got this to deal with. I've got this to contend with. So, like I said to you before, New Zealand is a fantastic place, but when it turns to custard, it turns to custard. Right. And this comparable to the last couple of weeks, in fact, the last three, four days have been absolutely diabolically awful, right? And um, not riding weather at all, especially when you still haven't managed to sort your gear out. <laughs> Whole new story again, but I'm going to talk about that later, right? So, apologies guys, I put the trailer together, I tried to create some um, great things that I think, great things and capture some moments that I think piece together my channel quite well. You know, it's kind of telling the story. What is Morris, what is MC Procrastinator about? MC Procrastinator about is riding bikes, but it's more than just riding bikes. It's the location of New Zealand, it's the people that you engage with, you meet, you know, the information that you get that flows from yourself and via your experience and from other people. I'm trying to capture that in my channel, all right? Now, if that's something you like to watch and you like what you've seen so far, hey, great, stay tuned. It's gonna be great talking to you guys as we build the channel. If not, hey, thanks for stopping in, and uh, yeah, perhaps we'll see you around. So, moving on, I want to talk about the first problem I've had. Right, so although we've had really, really bad weather, um, there has been a couple of real pocket days. Now, some of those days have been taken up where I've had to look after my kids because I've not had the flexibility to go out because um, my little girl is a competitive gymnast and it's meant that I've had the other kids, which is great because I get to spend quality time with children. However, um, I don't get to spend quality time with it's just waiting to be written here. So. Um, that's a bit of a problem, right? Then uh, the next thing is about technical problems. So when the weather has been specifically nice, I've unfortunately not been able to use my VR36 camera, which I'm holding in my hand, to capture some of that information. So normally I'm just going to point to the bike here. And uh, in the stock here, so it's a bit windy, so I'm trying to shout out a little bit louder. But normally I'd have a mountain here on the Honda CBR3 sitting there. Start again. Normally on the Honda uh, CBR 1000 RR, I had a stock in here and it would mount up just up here. And then the other, which you see this here, would sit on the mirror. Unfortunately, there's so much vibration. And when I say vibration, the vibration doesn't come through to me. It doesn't affect me. It just affects the camera, right? So I really need to change that. And what I think is happening is the battery. So let me just show you that. So the battery, just in here. So even though that's tightly pushed in, it seems to resonate, the vibration seems to resonate quite well and it causes arcing at the very back there. So, look, I'm going to work on that, try and sort it out. Ultimately, that just, that reinforces something that I related in one of my last videos, which is the, ca the Samsung VR360 camera is an exceptional camera. It offers a great amount of flexibility for the type of content that you create, video content that you create, um, but there are limitations. Limitations being the way that you record the sound and also the... Um, you know, you have to have a Samsung S7 to be able to capture that 360 camera. It takes ages to process, and you're limited on the amount of mounts that you can put. But more importantly, it's probably not as robust as something like a GoPro or something else that would be, like, say, for example, be mounted up in here. Right, so that's live and learn. Hopefully that bit, small piece of information helps you decide, oh, if you were thinking about Samsung VR360 camera, maybe put it on the back burner, or you're still happy, but it's definitely going to be a fallback secondary camera. Okay, great, moving on. So, a bit of good things that has happened. HGC hel helmet, I picked this up about three weeks ago. Um, one of the, I know, second hand helmet, right? Always got to be careful of that. Just pick it up quite quickly. There we go. It's a really, really nice helmet, actually. Okay, um, lovely colors. Uh, so, this is the FG15. So, I picked this up um, for little to no money off of uh, one of the ladies at work's husband who got into riding. He stuck it out for a, just over a year and he had a couple of near misses. And he just went, This isn't for me. Right, because that happens. So, you know, I believe him, and he says, you know, you've never dropped the helmet, it's been well looked after, and there we are. So, that's one good thing that's happened lately. I've got a new helmet. I had to do a little bit of modification because I wasn't 100% sure if it fit me, uh, but I checked all the measurements, etc. It all stacks up, and I've, I've kind of got used to it now, right, because of the shape. And next thing is this E J E A S E sex. Know how I say that because it's really hard to say that quite fast. That somebody else that can manage to say that fast, well done, because I can, right? So me and Penny Grew decided to buy this. He'd done a lot of research and says, hey, by the way, it'd be great to have a comms unit for these dual vlogs. Um, we invested in this. 
We'll probably put something a little bit more comprehensive together about the testing and what we think of this. So far though, the comms, the Bluetooth connectivity between myself and him is perfect. It's like absolutely, um, it really is excellent quality, right? I can understand him, you can understand me, it really is. Probably, it actually feels much better than even the quality you get on the phone, right? So that's brilliant. Um, I've also done some basic simple testing between using it as a recording uh, mechanism between the Bluetooth unit and my phone. So when I'm you know, doing a vlog, then the problem is I've got there is the camera is kind of like, every time I've gone to create a vlog, the, the camera is kind of duffed up. So I mean, it's a bit wasted. And I'm still not too sure about the quality of that camera. So I'm probably going to spend a little bit more time testing and refining that. And ultimately, I may end up um, working with a cable and using a different uh, recording um, uh, piece of hardware or I, I don't really know but it's a work in progress that's all I'll say about that right then I've got some gripes okay so um, dry rider boots right I actually really have um, no respect for dry rider I'm really quite disappointed with the product um, first I thought it was just unlucky with the first piece of, um, that I bought, but because I've got two things that have done similar types of things, I'm very disappointed. So my feedback to you, take it how you want. I'll give you a sort of show about what the problem is. I'll also put the details of the products in the description and you can make that choice if you're looking to buy them, right? First, dry rider boot, look at this. So when did I buy them? I bought them when I bought my Honda CBR1000RR, which is obviously sold because obviously I bought this. Now that is uh, back on New Year, sorry Christmas Eve last year. Um, so it's not that long ago, so maybe about six months. But look at this. Next thing, I'm riding my bike. That fits perfectly into there, which is a huge problem because sometimes my foot gets stuck. And even though I know I should pull the damn thing back, when you're riding, you get your foot stuck. The first thing you want to do is pull it to the side. And it, look, it doesn't pull to the side. You gotta do that, right? So, safety risk, don't recommend them. Um, I've been them, right? Next thing, right, so look at this. This is, so dry rider, dry rider gloves. They're actually really comfy, right? They're not waterproof, your hands get soaked, but we know that, right? Look at this. So, I bought these about three months before, sorry. I bought these about three months before. Look, they've got holes in them. They're just, they're just coming apart. So, really disappointing. The only other thing that I've actually had a bit of luck with, I bought Dry Rider um, Kevlar jeans and they're still in one piece. But you know what? That's probably because I don't use them that much. So if you think in Dry Rider, think carefully. I don't know how systemic is. I don't know how systemic the problems are across the products or if I've just been unlucky. But certainly I don't really rate the product. I won't be buying it again. Uh, okay, what else? So that probably brings me to the next mistake. So when I'm so as you know, I had the 899 crash. Okay, that's cool. It's been and gone. Um, it damaged my gear, which to be fair wasn't the end of the world because the, the gear that I had was um, reasonably average gear, right? But it protected me well, to be fair, but it was never waterproof. So I decided to invest in new gear. So I looked, I looked at all the brands and I liked RST. So I bought a pair of RST, um, can't remember the exact name of the uh, specific legs, but they were like $200. Actually, which the boots were $200. And... Um, yeah, like uh, they got sent out to me. I was really happy. Got the brand new uh, pants, and then I just stumbled across an RST jacket, which was the oh, it starts with V, the uh, Ventric. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter, right? So um, I got the jacket, and it was waterproof as well. It doesn't quite fit me. It's like it's like just too tight. So when I put my hands up like that, so when I do this, it digs in around here. So it's really uncomfortable, and it's not going to work. So. Bit gutted because um, now we've got to sell that, and then it turns out the pants were too short for me, and they don't have any stock in the country. So now I really have to revisit. And honestly, now I'm just thinking I'm just going to buy a new. I'm just going to go into a shop, try the damn stuff on, and just buy a new. Because um, look, that's another good point. Sometimes we try to save a little bit of money by buying um, what looks like good gear at second hand, and it, 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 in many instances it is. But, you know, you don't have any comeback, right? One, you can't take it back to the shop. You have to sell it. You probably lose money because you've got to wait on another person like you to buy it. And so on, right? So sometimes, I guess, you've got to ask yourself, for that extra $150, that $100, whatever it might be, to get the new stuff, is it worth just getting that new stuff? Because the chances are you might end up paying more than that in the long run or having to replace your stuff sooner. Food for thought. Right, so look, really that is me at the moment. So as you can see, I've got a lot of things on the go. I'm really working hard to sort of um, 
really deliver what I think in the future are going to be co it's going to be content relating to the Toronto and New Zealand uh, and myself of course um, that's going to be exciting to watch right so guys thank you very much for tuning in that's probably me done today now and I would just like to say thanks again for your support MC Procrastinator out